the sounds that were prevalent in the land. And because of that, uh, it seemed not to be the good books of some big guys, you know. But God wants to bring you into stature of leadership. Stature. There's a certain level of stature he wants to commit to you. And if you hold your ground, the Lord will make you plenteous and uh, you will not, you will soon be out of this. <laughs> Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We exalt your name. We ask that you help us this morning. Take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated. God bless you. John chapter 16, beginning from verse number 12. John 16, beginning from verse number 12. Woman of God, thank you. God bless you. Lord, increase you. 16 verse 12. I have yet, be bold, Pastor Ben, be bold. The, the, what I see God using you to do will require boldness. Don't be afraid to lose friends. Don't be afraid to stand alone. Don't, yeah, that's the way of the ego. Right? Stand your ground. Oh, yeah. What God wants to do in Uganda is not popular. So most people on the popular side are not on the side of God. I speak in parables. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. I think we'll, that, that will be enough for this morning. This is Jesus. If you have a red letter Bible, you will realize that the things that I just read are in red colors indicative of the fact that they are direct utterances from the Lord Jesus. And in this instance, what Jesus was trying to do was to introduce a new regime in the economy of God. There was a functionary of heaven that was coming to take the center stage of the administration of the purposes of God. And he had to give adequate introduction of that personality so that we'll be acquainted with his own style, his own style of governance. Are you with me? Those days when we were still in the university, the, we preferred the, even though I studied in the sciences, we preferred the theoretical courses than the calculations. If it's theoretical, that's an A. If it's calculation, we, it may not be an A, but maybe a B. But, uh, so before the semester starts, we count our A's. It's okay, this is an A, this is an A, this is an A. Oh, okay, the B here, and so there was this course that was a theoretical course, so we have counted it among the A's. 
until uh, the lecturer went for sabbatical leave and there was a vacuum in the department and they had to fill up that vacuum with anyone that had the requisite competence, the requisite qualification. And there was only one man in the entire science faculty that could fill up that vacuum. He had a uh, master's degree in uh, mathematics. He had a master's degree in quantum chemistry. He had a master's degree in physics. He had a master's degree in electrical electronics engineering. He had a master's degree in botany before he went for his PhD program in Germany. And because of how versatile he was, the prime university in Germany awarded him a degree, DSC, meaning he was a doctor of science, and he could lecture in any science department. When this man was brought into the vacuum, um, he transformed a theoretical course into calculations. <laughs> he began by deriving the Scrodinger equation. For those of you that know what I'm talking about, that was how he started the course. The course became very abstract. It is only in the spirit realm you could sniff the course <laughs> and gain a little perspective. So the question I have for you this morning is, what changed? Was it the course that changed or the lecturer that changed? It was the lecturer. So what Jesus is doing here is that he's introducing a new lecturer. Amen. And if you do not know his approach, his lecture style, uh, meanwhile, for your information, uh, 90% of the class had F's for a course that was previously, sorry, I didn't have, I was not among the F's anyway. <laughs> I was, I was a hard E. And the best was D. The reason was because we did not know the approach of the new lecturer. And so we could not relate with his style. We were not given prior information introduction that captured his own style, his own mode of service delivery was unknown. And so we encountered him without a knowledge of who he was, a knowledge of his own type of delivery. We were trying to understand him and we did not until the end of the semester. And it translated to a bag of F's. Now, if you, are you still with me? If you do not understand this lecturer that Jesus is introducing, he's going on sabbatical, and someone else is coming to fill in the room. If you do not understand his own approach towards the administration of God's economy, your life will be on an F. Even though there are so many hopes that hang on this new regime, that Jesus is introducing, but you will not be able to harness the hopes because you do not understand his style. So what Jesus is trying to do here is to give us an insight into the style that this new functionary operates with. Are you there? Now, first of all, before we begin to talk on the articles of his style, because it will interest you to know that if you do not know how to handle his style, you are going to miss out of the deliverables that God intends to make available to you. Because unfortunately or unfortunately, depending on the case, this personality is a compendium of everything that the Father is offering you. It means you are going to be missing on, on the things that the Father has packaged for you if you have a conflict with his style. Many believers, tongue-talking, Pentecostal people, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the power of God, have been shortchanged just because they did not understand 
that it was not about what God was offering. It was more about the style of the administrator that was on the stage. And many people have not taken in hand to study the style of the Holy Ghost. And the likelihood is that they miss out on what God is offering them. Before I go into the style, are you there? 20 minutes into my talk, join me with strings. Just 20 minutes into the talk, okay? When you join, then it means uh, we'll shift the service quietly to a, another plane. Yeah, we'll shift it to another plane so that we can accomplish that which we cannot accomplish on this plane. First of all, before we go into the intricacies of the style, the approach of the Holy Ghost in administering the dividend of the price that Jesus paid and the price for which Jesus prayed, it will be needful for us to take a little moment to contrast and compare the season in the administration of God that was managed by Jesus, vis-a-vis -vis the season in the administration of God that is managed by the Holy Ghost. Are you there? Number one, when Jesus walked this world, he was localized to place and time because it was operating from a human perspective. In fact, in order for him to launch the incarnation, in order for him to be the exact picture of the mystery of godliness, how that God can come in the form of a man. In order for him to achieve that, one of the things that took place was that he had to suspend his omni qualities are you with me god is omnipresent jesus had to give up that dimension in order for him to be manifest as a man god is omnipotent Jesus had to give up that dimension in order for him to manifest as a man. The abilities Jesus had were the abilities that the Holy Spirit made available to him part time in order for him to accomplish the mind of God. In order for Jesus to be man and not illegally man but man in every scope of humanity, he had to suspend his omni powers and he was at the mercy of the Holy Spirit to be able to perform. Are you with me? In order for Jesus to be truly man, because there's no man that is omniscient, the omniscient dimension was suspended, and the knowledge that was available to Jesus was that which was handed out to him by the Spirit of God. In that regard, he was man in every way, and that was what qualified him to be able to satisfy the claims of divine justice. Now, this is the claim of divine justice. Are you still following me? Yes. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. If you were there and you take your eyes back to the book of Genesis, Chapter 2, when God was giving Adam an orientation about the way he should function in the Garden of Eden, God made a statement to Adam. He said, in the day that you eat of this fruit, in dying, ye shall surely die. That was the position of the justice system of heaven that God was trying to acquaint Adam with. That you have liberty to eat of every fruit that is in this garden, including the tree of life, there's no restriction. But in the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you have determined your lines of development. 
if you eat of the tree of life, you have determined your lines of development. If you choose the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you have determined your lines of development. For instance, if you had eaten of the tree of life, you would have been perpetually dependent on God. If he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he would have been perpetually independent of God. And if you see the design from, are you there? Are you still following me? Are you following me? Stay with me. There's peace in my spirit today. And whenever there's peace, revelation, it flows. It just flows. There's no war here. There's no war. You know, I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. I know the sound of war when I hear it. <laughs> so there's no war here. So peace. Ah, that's the key to revelation. Now, Adam decided to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That means he declared independence from God. If you see the design for man, he was created in the image of God. He was created created in the likeness of God. So the creature called man was a being that could not exist apart from God. That's the design. Are you there? He was designed to be dependent on God. He's actually supposed to be a miniature representative of God within the natural framework of things. Whereas every other creature in the garden was created in its own image, Man was not created in his image. Man was created in the image of God. So he was like a step-down transformer that will bring the dimensions of God into the physical scope of creation, thereby having an appendage which was only in divinity, and that appendage was dominion. The dominion that man was going to manifest was not because he was man, but because he was a carrier of God and a representative of God within the framework of the physical creation. Are you still there? All right, so, when man chose to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, first of all, he became independent from God. That, so it was a declaration of independence. Now he was going to operate as a creature that, has, that is subject to mutation because he was no longer within the scope of the original context. Uh, he is an aberration right now. So the effect was that he became man of man, just like, do you understand that? God could no longer be factored into him. The best he could be was humanity. That means he was measured into time and the, the, the dimensions of the heavens were not captured within his framework. He became a creature that, he became dust and the serpent was designed to eat dust. So he became a victim of Satan's dominion. And the position of the justice system of heaven is that that rebellion was going to produce death. And the definition of death, according to scripture, is not the cessation of life, but separation from God. So in any means, any form, fashion, that you exist apart from God, the Bible calls it death. You might be the CEO of a bank apart from God. That's debt in the corporate world. You might be a billionaire in Kampala, which billionaire in shillings. Kenya, uh, uh, Uganda in shillings. That's debt with money. Are you with me? So when Jesus came, uh, how many of you still remember that the ark of Noah, when all the creatures entered into the ark, it was God that came and locked it? You still remember that? Yes. Good. So the guys outside were begging Noah to grant them access. He said, I'm sorry. God is the one that locked it. Only God can do what? Open it. You get that? In the book of Genesis chapter 6, an aberration takes place. In Genesis chapter 6, we have a situation that strengthened the stakes 
the shareholding of the kingdom of darkness upon the face of the earth. And what happened was that the sons of God departed from the estate of their separation. I will not explain that. Elders, people that have trained ears will understand what I'm saying. They, dis they departed from the estate of their separation and they compromised their separation and mingled themselves with the daughters of men. Are you there? That problem, that the result of that union is what we call the bondage of corruption. The bondage of corruption is what Paul speaks about in the book of Romans chapter 8. I don't know who believes with me because my best fruit is mango. I don't know who shares the same opinion. Well, you do. Now, I want to assure you that the mango you tasted that you liked was a mango that had been degraded in its power. I know you don't believe that. So let me prove it to you. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Romans 8. You, you tasted a banana. You liked it. What you tasted is far from the original banana. What you like is something that has been degraded, downgraded. Hey, um, Romans 8, beginning from verse 18, not, 20, not 21. Romans 8, 18. He said, for I reckon that the sufferings of the present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. He said, he allows us to suffer. Because he is aware of the fact that no matter the suffering that you go through, in order for the content that inhabits your spirit to begin to find expression, that suffering is of no consequence compared to the results that will find expression. What he's telling us here is the principle of the wine press. Wine press. You know, when you bring grapes from the farm, you bring them into the wine press, and the grapes are crushed. All right? The wine will never come out until the grapes are crushed. So the farmer knows, the, the brewer knows that anything the grape goes through is not comparable with the outcome. So God can subject his best to go through process that will bring them to a point where the treasure that is hidden in their empty vessel will now begin to manifest. Next scripture, verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. This is because of this verse I came here. Now, stay with me. You know that the problem in the book of Genesis chapter 6 was caused by the sons of God. According to the law of the Bible, it is only the sons of God that can solve that problem. You know, God locked the ark. Only God could open the ark. The problem was caused by sons of God. It will be solved by sons of God. If it is caused by an angel, it will be solved by what? That's the law of the Bible. Are you there? Yes. Now that you know this, the problem in the book of Genesis chapter 3 was caused by man. And only man can solve it. That's why Jesus had to come as man. You get that? Law of the Bible. Now, because I made a statement to a sister that likes mango there, I will, I will have made my point for this upcoming here. But because I made some, a commitment... 
I need to explain how the mango she ate is not the original mango. And the reason is because of something called the bondage of corruption. And I don't have time to take you to the book of Genesis chapter 6 to show you the bondage of corruption. Maybe I need to so that I'll convince that my sister about mango. Where, where is my um, technical man? Take me to the book of Genesis chapter 6. We'll come back here. Old oh, technical man. We'll come back to this uh, same place. In Genesis chapter number 6. Are you there? All right. Um, and it came to pass as men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. That the sons of God saw that the daughters of men saw of the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. They compromised their separation. So what they did now was mingling. Are you, are you there? Yes. All right, so there is a culture of separation. In fact, that's what holiness means. It means that you are separated unto something. Holiness doesn't mean separation. It means separation unto God. And what that means is this. You have a lot of uh, capacity. You can be a thief if you want. You can be a fornicator if you want. You can be an arm robber. You can be... You have the ability to be all of these things. But we choose to be separated unto God so that it is only the Holy Spirit that is allowed to operate us. That's what separation means. If you are separated unto God, we can look at you as a specimen under God and know God because he is the only one that operates through you. You become an advertisement for God because you are separated unto God. Now, the Bible makes us to understand that there are many systems, many programs, many applications that want to use you use your operating system to run themselves. One of them is called sin. Sin wants to run its application through your life as a specimen so that your life becomes an example of what sin can produce. The flesh is an application. It wants to run its dynamics through your life. So if, you're, if you give your life to the flesh, what? The outcome will be what the flesh, the flesh can produce. Are you still with me? The world system is an application. If you allow it to run in your life, we will see what happens when someone gives himself to the world. Satan is an application. He wants to run his application through your vessel. But the meaning of separation is that we are separated to God and the only application that runs our life is the Holy Ghost. So, if you see my life, you will see what the Holy Ghost can do. Is that clear? Yes. So, what happened in the book of Genesis chapter 6 was that the sons of God, and I don't have time to explain who the sons of God are. Just let's just say there are some people called the sons of God. So, the sons of God, they were a different set of people operating under different rules and regulations. Are you there? Yes, sir. So are you there? Yes, sir. And they decided to compromise their separation. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And then they now went into the daughters of men. The resultant effect was this. That person allowing his phone to disturb us, I want to say it's a mistake. But don't do it again. The effect of that mixture that took place is in the book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. This is where I got the terminology, bondage of corruption. And then you are going to see the, that terminology in the book of Romans also. Are you there? I'm doing this just because of that sister, to talk about mango. Because mango is significant. Now, the Bible says that the, 
earth also was corrupt, underline corrupt. That's where the bondage of corruption came. It was the sons of God losing their separation and mingling with the daughters of men. The resultant effect was corrupt. You get that? That's number one resultant effect. The second effect was violence. Are you with me? I know you will not believe, and I don't have time to trouble the scriptures to show you, God did never create any wild animal. Okay, you, I know that. <laughs> it was this mingling that produced, that made lions wild. All right. I know you don't believe. So. And I don't like leaving you where you don't believe something. He didn't create any wild animal. There was perfect harmony in Eden. Even after the fall, there was harmony. The sons of God were the ones that compromised their estate of separation and introduced corruption and violence. Okay. Have you seen a violent man before? There were no violent such that kind of violence. Huh? You don't believe. Okay. Mm. Calm down. I'm seeing your eyes. I'm saying this Nigerian man has come again with. <laughs> Give me just a moment. I will. Okay. Um. Can we do Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24 and 25? Isaiah 65, 24, 25. Just to prove that to you, then we can continue. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and, be, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And the wolf, this is the millennial reign, when Jesus will be the government of this act. Huh? And then everything will return to factory setting. He said, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. And the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. You still want me to continue? So this factory setting. There was no violence. Harmony will be restored. You are, you are not here. Are you there? Okay, I see that your eyes are opening now. Go with me to the book of um, Romans where we read so that I can finish this mango matter and then show you one thing about the Holy Ghost. His administration. Yeah? For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Underline vanity. Not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. The moment the bondage of corruption came, creature became subject to vanity. And it was God. Are you here? It was God himself that downgraded creation. You see, not willingly, but by reason of him, underlying him, God subjected creation to vanity. He downgraded the quality, the, the potential of creation just because of the bondage of corruption. If God did not do that, witchcraft would have been more potent than it is now. If God did not do that, necromancy would have been more potent than it is now. He had to downgrade the power of creation. That was what the bondage of corruption did. And it's only the manifestation of the sons of God that will undo that bondage. Oh, 
only. It is only the manifestation of the sons of God that will unlock the potential of creation. Have you ever seen that in the days of Deborah, the stars became instruments of war? They fought from their causes. Those dimensions have been shut down. They have been downgraded. Oh, you think this, the purpose of the stars is to give light because you, have, you are more carnal than spiritual. Oh, you don't know that hail are, are weapons of war. It's only the manifestation of the sons of God that we realign the entire ecosystem. If there were no rocks in this place, I would have done something. But I wouldn't do it here because I would have done something. I would have shown you an ability that water has, but it is only in the hand of one of the sons of God that it will work that way. As an example. <laughs> no, no, it's going to wet. We'll get this place wet, and I don't. That's not the intention. Are you there? Are you still there? So the reason why I even went into Romans is to show you that the problem was caused by sons of God, and it will be solved by sons of God. The problem in the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis chapter 3 was caused by man and the solution was going to come by man. This is what occasioned the fact that Jesus had to lay aside his omni qualities in order for him to be man in every sense so that he can satisfy the claims of divine justice. And what divine justice required was death. And that's why the ultimate purpose of Jesus' manifestation was to surrender to death as a sacrifice using the principle of substitution to create a pathway of salvation for anyone that believes. Exactly. Are you there? So, Jesus was limited. He could only be in one place at a time. So, if you want someone to be healed, you have to bring the person to the location where Jesus is. There was this location factor. That was part of the equation in the administration of God's purposes while Jesus walked this world. Are you there? But in the day of this new regime that Jesus speaks about, the location factor is going to be removed from the equation. Because the Holy Ghost is involved. So what was manual in the, in the days of Jesus becomes automatic. In the days of the Holy Ghost. Right in the heart of Kaaba. When the sons of the bond woman are going for pilgrimage. If anyone says Jesus is Lord there. The Holy Ghost will possess him. Because it's automatic. It's not location based. It's now faith based. Are you there? Yes. Number two. In the days when Jesus walked this world. There was no need for fasting. Because if you wanted to inquire from God. It was as easy as walking up to Jesus and asking him, just like John uh, chapter 9, who seen that this man was born blind? And then Jesus will begin to give you answers from the data bank of the Spirit. Hallelujah. But the Bible says a time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away. And then fasting will become part of your prayer requirement. I know most of you would have wanted to be available in the days of Jesus so that you will not fast. But it's too late. So there's a difference between the regime that Jesus pioneered and the regime that is being introduced right here. And we need to understand the lecturer so that we will have the ability to maximize his regime. I will say one thing and then I'll keep quiet. Then I stop. Can you increase that? Increase your volume. So Jesus now says, I have many things to say to you, but uh, 
you cannot bear them now. It means that Jesus doesn't speak to you based on the content of revelation he has available in store. He speaks to you only if he has designed that you have the capacity to, to bear it. This is an, a moment of ministerial frustration for Jesus. He has so much to say. But when he checks the capacity of the people, they don't have the capacity to handle it. So he has to refrain from saying it. So he, his own ministry has this capacity limitation that will stop him from delivering what he is burdened with. But the regime of the Holy Spirit doesn't have a capacity limitation. And I'll explain to you. I'll explain why. Is it how be it? I might have this limitation, but the Holy Ghost does not. When the Spirit of Truth is come, this is his approach. He will guide you into all truth. If you click on that word truth, if you have an electronic Bible, if you have an electronic Bible, I just want to confirm it before I say it. Yeah, I knew. It's Aletia. Um, the word Aletia refers more to reality. He will guide you into all reality. Let me explain the word truth. Uh, how many of you still remember Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1? Do you remember the content of Hebrews 11, 1? What does it say? Are you afraid? You are looking afraid. Oh my. Now, faith is the substance. Stop there, stop there. You read it like a novel. That's why you don't see it. Faith is a substance. That's Aletia. It's a reality. Now, okay, let me explain. How many of you here, maybe you were praying one time, and then you now felt something, and you knew that what you were praying for has been answered? Right? That thing that gave you that impression of an answer is a substance, it's a spiritual Substance is aletia. It is the effort of the Holy Spirit that furnishes our conviction and make us know that the things that our physical senses cannot relate with actually exist. That is aletia. I'm trying to teach you about the Holy Spirit. This lecturer, when he comes into force in your life, you know, Jesus said, I have so many things to share with you, but you cannot bear them now. Is that true? So, Jesus' approach in his own style of service delivery, there's a lot of speaking, saying that is involved. And if you, for those that have capacity to handle his sayings, then Aletia is now furnished in their heart. Hmm? But the, the, the spirit's approach is different. The spirit doesn't come saying. What the spirit does is that he guides you into Aletia first. Are you there? He makes you encounter the spiritual substance of that thing he's talking about in your spirit. Guess what will happen thereafter? The moment that substance is furnished in your spirit, you will be the one to talk about the substance. It will compel you to begin to say some things. Jesus would have said it to 
with the hope of accomplishing substance, but the Holy Spirit will furnish substance first. And then you begin to speak according to the substance that has been furnished. The formula of the Holy Spirit's reality is that he furnishes the spiritual reality of a thing before he introduces you to the physical manifestation of the thing. The Holy Spirit wants you to acknowledge as more important the spiritual reality of a thing than the physical manifestation of the thing. He begins a new kind of education to make you competent in knowing things in their reality form, in their aletia form. And in interacting with them from that standpoint, even without physical manifestations. That was the only way Noah would have built an ark for 120 years. The spiritual reality of the thing that was compelling him never doing good. Even though he was receiving mockery from the people of his generation for 120 years, his faith never shook. It was because the reality was held up so true and every other thing in the face of that reality became a lie. Oh, I wish I had time. Then you will see that it's easier for you to walk with God in the regime of the Holy Ghost than when Jesus was physically present. But I don't have time to prove that. But his teaching formula, his teaching aid, his teaching approach is by aletia, by substance. The way I know God wants to heal is that he brings me to touch the substance of healing. So I know that substance of healing is available. Then I begin to minister healing. Not because I'm a powerful man. I begin to minister healing because he himself had first furnished the substance. So if you cannot identify substance, then it means you cannot identify your deliverance. You cannot identify your blessing. You cannot identify your open door because it's not going to be physically obvious that there is any pathway, but it's the witness of the substance that will put you in a state where a carnal man can never approximate. He will guide you into all allegia. I'm going to stop there this morning. He will guide you. He will furnish a substance that will give you a perspective of spiritual reality as superior to physical circumstances that are tangible to your senses. It takes you beyond the scope of your human senses and makes you to understand that your spiritual senses are superior to your human senses. So you begin to transmit from the level of Aletia. When you operate that way, your generation will not be able to understand you. Oh, you are the Lamb. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the truth. Oh, oh. And on to you I lift my voice to say you are the Lamb upon 
One more time. You are glorious. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And all to you I lift my voice to say you are the Lamb above. So this is a practical, I, I need to do a practical for my teaching. Because the kingdom of God is not a word. Words are weak to express and to establish the dimensions of God. You know, when we studied biology those days, there are several things we need to illustrate by the aid of a diagram. So you know, it becomes clear what you are talking about. In the kingdom, the utensil that is used to illustrate kingdom things is called power. For the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not in word. Words are weak to illustrate the kingdom. But power is sufficient to accomplish the illustration. So I have finished talking about words. But the reality of what I'm talking about is not in words. It's in a certain manifestation. Are you there? So right now in my spirit, I picked something. And what I picked is that the Holy Spirit wants to heal people's eyes. And you know what? Today, you are exempted from believing. The body not believing. Don't believe. Right? You are relieved from the body of what? Of believing. If it is true that I picked that substance, The Holy Ghost will bring it to pass. Whether you believe it or not. I'm tired of making of people saying they believe. Don't believe. Today, don't believe. Are you, are you okay? Now, so, let's go now. You, you, you are short-sighted. You use glasses to read. Remove it. You don't need to stand up just where you are. Remove it and lay your hands on your eyes. That is in case you want healing. Because I know some people here don't want and you are at liberty to make your choice. That rule. Oh. <laughs> and all to you we leave our voice to say you are. Don't remove it till I tell you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of blindness, blinding spirits, be bound. Blinding spirits, be bound. Blinding spirits, come out of the eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of the eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say to the eyes, eyes, see in Jesus' mighty name. Remove your hands. Test your eyes. If it's, you need to read to test it, you need to look at the light to see that you are no longer photophobic. Run a test quickly. Run a test quickly. If you notice there's a change on your sight, the way the preacher will know is that you just wave like this. Then I'll come to you. But you have two minutes to run a test. When you are finished running the test, and you notice there's an improvement, you wave to the preacher. And he will come near you. Yes? So, two minutes. Run your test on the eyes. And when you have finished running your test, 
on the eyes. You notice there's a change. You do like this. Do like this to the preacher. Not true. Yeah. Now, the only thing I ask, are you with me? The only thing I ask is, don't lie. Don't say something happened when it did not happen. And if something happened, don't keep quiet. Are we? Are we acquainted with the rules of engagement? All right, let's try again. Yeah. We have one. We have two. You with green. Come. And the other sister, come. come. Yeah. Mm. Now, listen to me. This is not because of your faith. Because I told you not to believe. Yeah, this practical, you are not understanding this practical. Are you there? Are you still here? Are we in Kampala? Yes. Or you are somewhere else? Come back here. Let's continue. I'm, I'm still teaching. Oh my God. We are here. Now, so, sister, how are you? All right, so let's find out from that. What happened to you? In fact, what is your condition? What was your condition? What happened to you when I prayed? Did you feel anything? And what is your condition now? That's all I want you to say. Okay? I had light sensitivity. That, now, what's wrong with the microphone? Are we, are we attacked? I had light sensitivity. I couldn't see without my specs. Uh, wait. I, I want to know if we're under attack or... Because my own mic is function. Every time they try to change my mic, we had a problem. So, hey, uh -huh. okay, it's, the mic is the problem. <laughs> Me, I'm the problem. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Come, come again. I had light sensitivity. I couldn't see my phone, a laptop. Generally, I couldn't see without my specs. Okay, so what happened to you when we prayed? Did you feel anything? No. But you, I opened my eyes, checked the phone, and I can see now. You can see now. Now, please note that this is not a miracle service. I'm just teaching. This is part of the teaching. This is a practical part of the teaching. I knew it by the witness of the Holy Ghost first, Aletia. And I accepted what I knew by the Holy Ghost as my reality. And I refused what I was seeing with my eyes. And I rejected it. It is not reality. And then that which I received as a letter, it became the reality. You see, I don't have time. If I did, you will know how to work with the Holy Ghost today. You will go home and do something you never believed you could do. Come. No, 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 I'm not done. You don't want to receive. Okay, you have. All right. After this, this experience, in six months, her life will be transformed. That from now to till six months. Yes. What happened to you? So I am. Do you use glasses? I do. They're oh, here. okay. Let, let me have that. I I, I like inspecting. I am an ophthalmologist, not by training. But, but by practice. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what's your own story? So for me, I'm extremely short-sighted. Extremely short-sighted? Yes. So for how many years? Um, 12, now it's about like 12 years. 12 years short-sighted? So, um, so I'm so short-sighted, so, so much that when I came in this morning, I was given a seat at the back. But then I told one of the ushers, I really cannot see. I need to sit in front. So I was given a seat at the front. So when you asked us to lay hands on our eyes, I did that. And I, to test, I looked at the words on the She looked at the projector. words on the screen here. Yeah. So without my specs, I can't see. I, I couldn't see at all. Okay. And then I tested again by looking at a smaller screen, the one on the other side. Smaller the, screen? The, the, the letters are smaller. Okay. But I could see. So, so I could see a bit was a bit blurry, but it was 
It's clearer than when don't worry, I don't, don't have worry, my don't specs worry. on. You see, that place you are standing, the name is called Jesus Clinic. <laughs> As you are standing, <laughs> now, are you still with me? Are you still with me? Now, so, this experience has been for 12 years. You realize that time has no authority when a late year is involved. That means we can short circuit time. We can operate as though time never existed. We can undermine time. Now, when I was praying that prayer, did you bother to count how many seconds the prayer was? The prayer was 12 seconds. So 12 seconds of prayer on doing 12 years of short cycle. Does it make sense? So it was not a prayer. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm still teaching. It was not a prayer that was the issue. It was a late year. If you pray with that substance, it will have power. But if there is no substance, don't even pray. Just be, be speaking in tongues until the substance comes. Don't, don't try. Nothing will happen. Are you following me? The difference between one man and the other man is substance. He guides men into substance. Once you find substance, time becomes a lie. Now he wants to bless you. Grace will be poured on your vessel. And you will have a miracle, a breakthrough. From now to the next six months. Yes, you have received it. Go. Yeah, we have somebody else. Yes, what's your story? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, now. <laughs> now the mic is back. So what happened now? Hey, what happened? What happened? Oh, okay. Uh, I've been sh short-sighted. Short-sighted? Yeah, when pastor was For praying, how many years have you been short-sighted? It has been quite uh, more than five years. More than five years short-sighted. So when a pastor was praying, I touched my eyes. Touches and eyes. a few tears started coming out. Tears started coming out. Now I'm, I can see properly. I can see properly. I praise the Lord. Now notice, notice. This is not a miracle service. I'm just, this is what I, it's natural. Eh? I wake up from sleep. Like one day I woke up from sleep. My wife woke me. Meanwhile, they don't wake me up from sleep. So when she woke me up, I knew there was a serious. It's all right. So. What's the problem? Say there are some people in the sitting room. <laughs> Go and drive them. Say, sorry. They say you give them your consent that you will preach for them. Preach! See? She's right. the only one that can appease. Yeah. So, can you take your back? I did and wore suit. And when I came out, I just, the nothing just came again. People need to see. No, that, that was deafness. And the lady there, 17 years deaf. I have not prayed that morning. I just woke up from sleep. And a deaf person. It's not because I'm powerful. It's because of substance. Somebody will hear me. I know somebody will hear me. Substance. Please tell your neighbor substance. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Before I sit down, there's a lady here. And this lady that I speak of, God is beginning to trust her with some level of anointing, some level of grace. Because she has been faithful in intercession. So what God wants to do is to promote her, to increase her rank. So that when she prays, she'll begin to see the things she's praying about and how God is answering her prayer. So this is substance. Father, in the name of Jesus, anywhere this lady is that you want to promote, you want to change her rank, you want to change her capacity, can you anoint that lady? Can you touch that lady? Can you touch her? Uh, 
Can you help me with those ladies? Help me with them. Oh, my time is up. Jesus. We can continue like this at 4 p.m. People will be getting healed, delivered. Even the ones you disbelieve, it will, happen, it will still happen. You have been promoted. I've been sent to announce your promotion. I've been sent to announce your promotion. God is coming to visit you. He's coming to visit you. He's coming to visit you. He visits you. He visits you. He visits you. He visits you. In the name of Jesus. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace.
Just lift up those hands wherever you and continue worshiping God. Speak words of adoration because He is worthy. Yes, Father, Lord. we bless you. We give you praise. We give yes, you honor. Lord. We worship you. We acknowledge you as King. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Saints of God, catch with watch has been released in the spirit. There's things hovering here. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Speaking tongues. Catch it. Let, let's arrest it. La pro telelis kos kamba dika. I've been expecting you, Jaira. I've been expecting. I've been expecting you. 